good morning children after few year days rest we are meeting again welcome back hope all of you are keeping safe the topic we were doing in the last class was gauss theorem according to gauss theorem the flux formula electric flux formula we have learned phi e is equal to q upon epsilon not it means electric flux does not depend upon the shape and size of the gaussian surface it depends upon the charge contained in the gaussian surface that means phi e is equal to q upon epsilon not today we have to learn the applications of gauss theorem the first one is deduction of coulomb's law from gauss theorem we have to prove the coulomb's law from the gauss theorem so we are starting the first application all of us know phi e is equal to integral e dot d a that is equal to integral e d a cos theta so to prove this we are considering a positive point charge plus q at the point o and we have taken the spherical gaussian surface on which we have taken a point p having area da the radius of the gaussian surface is r and we are finding out the flux passing through p phi e here the electric field vector is outward and area vector also outward so theta in this case becomes zero and when you when we substitute in this formula we get e a so the first equation for phi e is e a a the area of the gaussian surface it is the spherical surface so the area is 4 pi r square thus phi e is equal to e 4 pi r square let it be first equation next phi e another equation is q upon epsilon not from gauss theorem equate these two equations from that we get e into 4 pi r square is equal to q upon epsilon not that is e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square this is the formula we are getting for electric field but we know that is coulomb force is f is equal to e into q not in place of e we are substituting this one thus we get the coulomb force f is equal to q q not upon 4 pi epsilon not r square so this is the formula for coulomb force we started from the gauss theorem and we obtained coulomb force so this is the first application how to deduce coulomb's law from gauss theorem 
second application children we have to find out the electric field due to infinite line of charges so we have kept here place two charges on the infinite line then what is the electric field formula we have to derive it so we have considered a gaussian cylindrical surface whose height is l and radius is r so this gaussian surface contains three parts upper circular surface lower circular surface and the curved surface we have to find out the flux through these three surfaces for that first we find out the angle theta we can see here angle theta is 90 so what is angle theta children angle theta is the angle between the electric field vector as well as area vector you can see here electric field is outward since it is positive charge and area vector is upward angle theta is 90 you know cos 90 is zero that means in the flux formula when we substitute substitute we will get in that case flux is zero because the flux formula is e da sin theta sorry e da cos theta so cos 90 is zero so flux here is zero similar is here also the area vector is downward electric field vector is outward so the angle theta here is 90 cos 90 is zero thus we can see that electric flux through this surface also is zero next one is the curved surface in the curved surface electric field vector and the area vector are parallel that means theta is zero cos zero is one so when we put here in the flux formula integral e dot da we get integral e da that is integral e da is equal to e a e into a the area of the curved surface is 2 pi r l thus we get the electric flux formula e into 2 pi r l i repeat this point again children in the upper surface and the lower surface the flat circular surfaces theta is zero theta zero sorry theta is 90 that means cos 90 is zero so no flux is passing through both these surfaces whereas here curved surface electric field vector is outward area vector also outward theta is zero theta zero means cos zero cos zero is one so when we do the formula here phi e integral e dot da that means integral e da cos theta become e da cos zero cos zero one it becomes integral e da integral e da is e a and e into area is two pi r l so this is the first formula for electric flux now second formula is q upon epsilon naught from the cos theorem 
since the charges are placed on the line we can replace q in terms of linear charge density lambda that is q is equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught so these are the two equations for electric flux so we get equating the rhs of both the equations we get e into 2 pi r l is equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught l cancelled from both the side we get e is equal to lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r in the vector form we have written here the unit vector r cap to know the direction to indicate the direction so we know that e is inversely proportional to r so when we plot the graph of e versus r you can see when r increases the e is decreasing this is the formula children for the electric field due to infinite line charges now third application electric field due to infinite sheet of charge it means charges are placed on a sheet so let us take a sheet with the positive charge to study about the flux we have considered cylindrical gaussian surface on this cylindrical gaussian surface first we are taking the curved surface cylinders curved surface so we can see that when we consider the curved surface the electric field vector and the area vector are perpendicular to each other electric field vector and area vector are perpendicular to each other it means on the curved surface theta is 90 so cos 90 is 0 no flux is passing through curved surface in this case let us consider the other flat circular surfaces these two here we can see electric field vector and area vector are parallel to each other here also it means theta is zero here that is cos zero one it means flux is passing through these two circular flat surfaces thus we get the total flux for passing phi p is equal to integral e dot da plus integral e dot da that is this is for one surface here and this is for the other surface this one since theta is zero the formula become eda cos zero that is eda when you do the integration it become ea similar here also ea plus ea that is 2 ea this is one formula for electric flux next formula from the coulomb's law phi e is equal to q upon epsilon naught since here the charges are on the sheet on the surface we have replaced q by sigma a surface charge density so q upon epsilon naught is sigma a upon epsilon naught this is the first equation this is the second equation since the left hand sides are equal we equate the right hand side thus we get e 2ea is equal to sigma a upon epsilon naught from that we get e is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon naught in this case e formula does not contain r it means that e does not depend upon r e remains constant when the charges are placed on the sheet e does not depend upon r that is why this is a straight line.
So see children the difference between these two. Here the charges are on the line. So we have taken lambda linear charge density. Here charges are on the sheet. So we have taken surface charge density sigma. So one difference. Then next is here we have to consider only the curved surface. The flat circular surfaces theta is 90. Cos 90 is 0. So no flex. Only one surface is passing the flex that is the curved one. Whereas here curved is not passing because theta is 90. Whereas the flat circular surfaces are considered because in this side theta is equal to 0. That means maximum flex will be passing. So children, these are the three applications of Gauss theorem. The remaining applications we will do in the next section. Children, stay safe. Don't go out. Alright. Thank you children. Bye.